when is that perfect moment? You, know, you never know. There's no specifics. It's just a feeling that you know when that mark has been hit. Every little piece is in its right place. have that energy that's coming out of the character that you're trying to portray because essentially you know the models are really like actors they're not really models at least in my work a big part of it is acting sometimes what happens is I'll set something up and and I think okay Corey this is exactly how you want it to look and then once I look through the lens it's a totally different story. The composition really plays a big part of each photograph, and the composition doesn't just come right away. I think it takes a lot of playing around. It's not just chance. Photographs are very contrived from a good place, you know, with a good intention of contriving something. You know, I just want it to be perfect. I'll go back time and time again. And, you know, I'll always take advice from others, people that are on set, somebody who's assisting me, they might see something I don't see. It's really just like, you know, it's a collaborative a lot sometimes. And that's what really makes it so fun and so interesting that it's not only about me, it's really about everything that goes into it. Not just the props, not just the composition, not just the color, but everyone who's also in it. And when we are all there, and that's when the timing is perfect, and that's when I have it. My grandmother, Loretta Darling, was a really fabulous person. Her life was just filled with freedom and love, and she sticks to me really hard. I think everything about her was so fun that if you were a kid and you were around her, you just you wanted to be her. I mean, she was like the kid's dream of a grown-up. Her life was just colorful, and she influenced so much of who I am, clearly. <laughs> and she always had the camera. That's where it all comes from, I think. All eyes on me. I just always loved anything that was artistic and fun. In high school, art class was a big, big deal for me. And at Venice High, they had a really great photography program, and I put myself in it immediately. That's where I first learned to, you know, really shoot with an SLR, how to get into the dark room, produce my film, and print my negatives, and I learned it all there. But I've also taught myself a lot. I really came far. And then from that, I knew that that's what I wanted to do when I got older. So going into college, I went to Santa Monica College and had a really great photography program. And I stayed there for about three years because that's when I moved here. I lived in Los Angeles for 21 years. Los Angeles is so deeply rooted, I feel like, into who I am. And when I say Los Angeles, I should really just say Venice Beach, because Venice Beach is really, it really has an identity of its own, even more separate from Los Angeles, I think. I moved here right before my 21st birthday. Met the love of my life, Eric, in Los Angeles. He had an opportunity to move back here to Rhode Island. He's from here originally. You know, we tried it out for a year, and a year turned into 10 years, and also turned into me becoming a mother within that first year and having my daughter, Kylie. Whichever one looks colorful, like would work in this set and you think looks fun. You know it's right when you get really excited. It's like a feeling that you can't explain. Sometimes, you know, you take what you're given. I have a lot of really amazing friends that lend themselves to my art. And so I'm really grateful for everybody kind of just putting themselves in it. For instance, my friend Beecher, and uh, she's got these antlers on her head. When you look at that photograph, you feel warmth, even though it kind of looks cold. You just feel warmth and you feel love and you feel peace of mind. But what's hysterical is that her two-year-old was having a crying fit and pulling on her legs while I was shooting it. But you could never tell 
what was really going on behind the scenes. And so for me, that was just kind of one of my funny shoots. But everybody that sees that photograph goes, oh wow, it's so calm and so peaceful. And I'm like, yeah, yeah it is. But hey, that's behind the scenes. That's for me to know and for the viewer to find out. <laughs> I love using Photoshop. I think it's really funny because I feel like a lot of traditional photographers tend to not want to use Photoshop or not want to give it its credit. And it really deserves a lot of credit because honestly, you know, I can remember being in a photo lab for hours at a time, spending the whole day in there manipulating my negatives, manipulating a print, you know. I just have the opportunity to do it in a computer program. So it really breaks down to be the same. I use it to my advantage. I tend to want to make fantasy a reality because if you think about it, life is kind of boring if you just look at it in a normal way. And if you have the opportunity to create that fabulous world that you always wanted, why not do it? The best way for me to show people what I had in my head was to create kind of these fabulous, odd worlds that I went to in my dreams and in my thoughts. To put together this wonderful set, find models, paint, dress up, do makeup, hair, costume, and then it's all right there and you can just see it. I'm a part of this art world, but I'm kind of not. Like I just, you know, I just, I'm doing it because I, because I like it. <laughs> and I kind of feel like sometimes I should know a lot more than what I do know. And this is just me, this is just what I do. But every day is learning, you know, in the process of my artwork, you know, it's, I'm doing it because I love it, but I'm also doing it because I'm teaching myself more as I go along. It's always a process.